Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, a lot of Christians refer to the phrase, chew the meat and spit out the bones as a biblical uh, reference, but 2 Peter 2.1 would actually warn against this. This is absolutely true. Many Christians, perhaps naively, or certainly naively, and lacking discernment, but not necessarily of malintention, believed this chew the meat, spit out the bones. We'll find the teaching, and it may have bad things in it, but we'll take what's good and reject what's bad. And they'll apply that to preachers. First of all, there's no such verse that says chew the meat and spit out the bones. Now look, I don't contend over every little difference of doctrine or even on significant issues. For instance, I disagree with my brother and friend, Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, on the timing of the rapture. And I disagree with his exegesis of Hebrews chapter 6. But overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, he's a good Bible expositor, a very good one. I recommend his books. I sanction his ministry. Not only do I like him personally, I think he's a great writer. I think he's great at refuting certain kinds of error. He's somebody whose ministry I thank the Lord for, even though there are one or two points I don't agree. I agree with 100% of the essentials and 90, if not 95% of non-essentials, but things that are, are however, important, although not absolutely essential as in salvation, the authority of scripture, and so forth. Another would be Todd Friel. He's caught up in Calvinism. I don't think he's a very good Bible expositor, but he's a great communicator. He's great at discernment and evangelism and certain a certain kind of apologetics. He's great at what he does in in, in exposing and refuting popular errors in the church. He's great at what he does in terms of evangelism and the kind of apologetics he does and his use of humor. He's very good at that. I don't reject that stuff. I just reject his MacArthurism, which is which is frankly false. Okay. You can say a teacher has this right and he and you don't agree with him on that. But if it's a fundamental issue at stake, something fundamental and essential, what Jesus drew the distinction of straining a gnat, swallowing a camel. Uh, if it's a camel, you got a problem. The gnat we can strain. But if it's a camel, you can't strain a camel. The whole thing is no good. But that's not how false teachers package it or present it. We're told in 2 Corinthians, like Lucifer, they come as angels of light, looking like brethren. Let's look at the passage you quote from 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. For false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you. Notice that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul uses the terms false prophet, pseudo-prophetes, and false teacher interchangeably. Why? Well, if somebody's doctrines are wrong, their prophecies are going to be wrong. Why do people like Mike Bickle and Cindy Jacobs <clears throat> and uh, other such people, Rick Joyner, Predict things that don't happen and don't work. Why does that happen? Why? Well, that's the question. Their prophecies prove wrong because their doctrine is wrong. That's why it happens. Their doctrine is wrong. Now, false teachers will produce false prophets, and false prophets, by definition, will have false teaching, false doctrine. So Peter uses the two almost synonymously and certainly interchangeably. And he says, just as there will also be false teachers among you, 
who will secretly introduce destructive heresies. Panasogzusit. They put truth next to error. It is not a case of swallowing the meat and spitting out the bones. It is a homogeneous mixture. Suppose I have iced tea, hypothetically, and arsenic. And it's mostly iced tea. But it's only a few milliliters of arsenic needed to make you very sick and a few milliliters more to kill you. You want some? Of course you don't. That's parasozusa. If you put sour milk into coffee, you can't spit out the sour milk and drink the coffee. It comes as a mixture. The Lord hates the mixture. The Hebrews were not allowed to make a garment of wool and flax. In Laodicea, you have hot springs, I've been there many times, and cold springs, but then you have springs where the two come together, where the hot water comes down from Pamukkala, and there are different springs. Warm ones, cool ones, and lukewarm ones. Jesus did not like the lukewarm ones. He spit them out. He says, I wish you were hot or cold. He spit them out. He doesn't like the mixture. Parasogzusin is the mixture. This is the way false doctrine works. It's the way false teachers operate, and it's the way false prophets operate. A mixture. They use truth to camouflage error. The Jehovah's Witnesses will say true things. The Mormons will say true things. The Roman Church will say true things. Talmudic Judaism will say true things. They will all say true things. Liberal Protestantism will say true things. But it's sugarcoating for the poison. Let's look. Even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. You look at people like Kenneth Copeland, who got his doctrine from Kenneth Hagin and E.W. Kenyon via Hagin. That Satan, not Jesus, got the victory on the cross. When Jesus said it is finished, it was not finished. The biggest failure in the Bible, I quote him directly, is God, according to Kenneth Copeland. That when Jesus died, he became one nature with Satan in hell. And he was tortured three days and three nights in hell and had to be born again. This is the teaching these people subscribe to. It's a different gospel. They deny the master who bought them. You have people now, like the author of The Shack, William B. Young, or in the United Kingdom, the youth minister, uh, Steve Chalk, denying penal atonement, denying propitiation, denying substitutionary sacrifice. They deny the master who bought them. Jesus didn't die for sin. It would make God the quintessential cosmic child abuser. Steve, York, Steve Chalk teaches the British youth. Christian you. They deny the master who bought them. Oh, but he says good things. It's sugar-coated poison. It's parasoxusin. It is a lethal mixture of truth and error. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Now let's look at what it's saying about these people. One, they will draw people by means of sensuality. People will think it's the Holy Spirit, but it's only their emotions, their feelings being manipulated. And they're conned into thinking it's the Spirit speaking to them or leading them or something of this nature. Their sensuality predisposes them to it because they do not know how to discern judging teachings on the basis of the Word of God by the Holy Spirit. Secondly, in their greed they will exploit you. 
such people almost invariably, most certainly and obviously in the case of the word faith tele evangelists, are greed driven. The New Testament says relatively little about money and most of what it says is a caveat, a warning about the love of it. These people, it's the main subject they preach about, some of them up to 70% of the time. And they use sensuality. Oh, they say true things. They preach the true gospel. Combined with what? This is true of people like Francis Chan and John Piper. John Piper has gone into very serious error. He was always a replacementist. But now he's promoting Rick Warren. Rick Warren who says we have to unite with people who worship other gods to bring in global peace. So right now, uh, through our peace plan, we are training uh, both pastors and, uh, and imams. And we are training leaders, actually volunteers, from both the mosques and the churches that are coming together to say, how, how can we learn health care so we can care for the people in our congregations? The congregational unit whether it's a Muslim congregation, a Jewish congregation, a Christian congregation, or whatever, is a basic unit you're going to find in every community. And that congregational unit uh, is there to be uh, mobilized for, the, for these global problems. But let me mention the peace plan. Pursuing reconciliation, mm -hmm. equipping servant leaders, assisting the poor, caring for the sick, educating the next generation. Mm -hmm. Now. What I want to say is, who could not love those five commitments? <laughs> and the purpose-driven life, here's one more agenda that I have, mm -hmm. besides strengthening foundations and, or making them explicit. Sure. Um, I, I read The Purpose-Driven Life very carefully. This is mm -hmm. 20 pages of notes here. Wow. Um, and I have read critiques of it, mm -hmm. and one of my agendas is to do an appreciative Critique and mm. and it will I think feel to you. Okay. I hope it does mainly appreciative <laughs> Because yeah. frankly, I'm appalled mm. at the kinds of slanders mm. That have been brought against this book mm. by people whose methods of critique if they were consistently applied to the Bible mm. would undo it as the Word of God. Mm. I, I really, you know, I, I, I'm one of these reformed types, mm. and my type tends to get on your case mm. pretty often. And when I read the book, I thought, <laughs> what's the issue here? No. Paul and Moses said other gods are demons. The mono and Shadim. I'm the Lord your God. You'll have no gods before me. Yet Piper promotes this guy, Rick Warren. Francis Chan. Teaches a lot of truth. Yeah. He puts a lot of sugar on the poison. He says if you speak against false teachers, obvious ones like Bill Johnson, a mystic and a Gnostic, you're hurting the body of Christ and God's going to destroy you. Francis Chan is a deceiver. He's a deceived man himself. It says in Timothy, deceiving and being deceived. These men are all parasodzusin. We don't eat the meat and spit out the bones. Another is John MacArthur. This is where I have the problem with Brother Friel, even though I like his discernment and evangelistic material. John MacArthur says it will be possible to take the mark of the beast, sell your soul to the devil, worship Satan in the person of Antichrist, worship the image of the beast, and still get saved. It completely erases Revelation chapter 14, 11, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 from the Word of God. John MacArthur teaches some of the most shocking, heretical, false doctrine in the church today. But most of what he says is true. His radical cessationism and his war against all charismatics and Pentecostals, even the moderate ones, is no more scripturally grounded on one extreme than the hyper-charismatics and ultra-Pentecostal lunatics he's rallying against are on the other extreme. Neither extreme is biblically balanced. Neither. 
just look at it. It's Jamagatha. Para Sogzusin. Now they may say true things. They do say true things. Certainly Todd Friel says many true things about deceivers like Michael Brown. I don't disagree with that. But what does he want with Magatha? It's para sogzusin. This is just not scriptural. It's just not right. Don't believe it. It's poison. Don't drink it. You can't drink the tea and spit out the arsenic. You can't eat the so-called meat and spit out the bones. That's simply the way it is. Second Peter says don't do it. And it warns us what will happen when people do do it. My name is James Jacob Prash, Morial Ministries. God bless you and thank you for listening. And on a personal note, and I mean this, if I didn't love the body of Christ, I wouldn't care what Christians believed. But we're in the last days of apostasy. If possible, the elect will be deceived, and it is possible the elect are being deceived. That's why I say some of the things I say and no other reason. The Lord knows that. Let God judge me. You judge what I say. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob.